Hello and welcome back to Conscious Contact Podcast. My name is Janae Peavy and I'm here with my co-host Susan Sanders. And today, I don't I don't know, this isn't like controversial, but I, I feel like I get very heated about this. Not like an angry bad way, but I have strong opinions about this. Mm, mm-hmm. Self-care versus self-comfort. Yes. So before I get into my thoughts, I want to know your framework for this episode. Yes. I also have strong thoughts about this topic because self care mm-hmm. seems to be a super buzzword right now. And everyone, that's not a lie or that that's a lie. Not everyone. Um, <laughs> there are, you see it in a lot of different places, whether it is books, news articles, um, social media, of course, mm-hmm. um, the, the, talking about the importance of of self-care but the activities i'll say that are offered for self-care uh-huh i just think is some junk agreed because so one of the examples was um showering <laughs> basic hygiene <laughs> is not self-care no it's not <laughs> and i think what happens is well-meaning people um, hear that and offer it up to themselves or to their partner Mm -hmm. as self-care and it doesn't solve the damn problem. No. So a a practical example or or an example is, so if there is a, a husband who is trying to support his spouse and she's struggling so the woman is struggling for whatever reason and the man is like oh i want to help i want to help i oh i have see this thing on my google that says self-care um honey go take a bath Mm -hmm. yeah well my hygiene is not (laughs) and then he checks the box off like i supported her Mm self-care he has the right intention the universe has whatever he consumed, whatever media thing he has consumed to tell him a bathing is self-care mm-hmm. has led him astray. Yeah. And she thinks this is all I get. Like I still, yeah. I'm, yay, I'm clean. Yeah. But I still feel hollow. Yeah. And I, I think you touched on a great point that we should make at the beginning. The intention is wonderful. And I, mm-hmm. I think that the goal is great, um, but it's just bunk advice uh, most of the time. And yes, yeah, self-care is great, but I think we need to reframe it, which is what we're going to get into. And I agree, like the the new mom thing, oh, I just took a shower, self-care. And I'm like, okay, Mm -hmm. I understand that being a new mom is crazy. I understand that that's probably a really awesome thing for you to be able to take a shower by yourself and have someone else take care of the kid. However, Mm -hmm. (laughs) if you're showering once a week because you have a new baby, maybe you should call someone Mm. because that's not sustainable for you or the child. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's that's not going to be a good foundation for you to set y'all's life up on (laughs) yeah and I don't know I've not had an infant um so I can't speak too much to that particular example yeah I'm thinking in terms of like someone who is depressed yeah and can't get out of bed and they're not taking care of their hygiene Mm -hmm. um that is an example where perhaps Therapy is what self care could be. Yes, a hundred percent. Everyone, right. everyone needs to go to therapy. <laughs> End of episode. <laughs> yeah. And so, how I like to define it is self comfort is about self soothing, mm-hmm. and it's more of I just need to soothe in this moment, like a a child. Yeah. Really, you know, when yeah. I see a mom soothe her baby, it is the um pacifier for example mm-hmm. something that pacifies you in the moment to get you through to the next yeah. but self care really has more long term implications yes. to it rather than soothing in the moment mm-hmm. and that's how i differentiate and it's sort of the um i'm going to call it a template that i would lay against an article or a social media post or whatever it is yeah 
you know, is this person truly peddling self-care or Mm self-comfort? And I would like to suggest that it follow the money. You know, we talk about that a lot. (laughs) Does it behoove this person or this organization to sell you something and they're calling it self-care? Some bath salts or a bubble bar. Right. Bath bomb. Yeah. Like, come on. Come on. Or wine. I see that a lot. Yes. And that makes me so sad for the people that are, I don't want to say falling for it because that doesn't, that makes it sound like I'm talking down. The people that that is influencing in Mm -hmm. a negative way, like you've had a hard day. You deserve barefoot something, something. Right. Uh, Right. You know, that's going to solve all your problems and that's self-care and you deserve it, Mm -hmm. you know, which yikes first off (laughs) but with anything telling your telling yourself that you I don't even know how to put this correctly telling yourself that you deserve something Mm -hmm. it like you've worked out x amount so you deserve to eat dinner Mm. (laughs) it can get into this negative space or you've saved and not spent money all month so you deserve to go on a shopping spree you did dry january so you deserve to go crazy in february right um it just we can end up with skewed priorities Mm -hmm. and a negative way of dealing with our emotions Mm -hmm. it goes from a nice uh something to try out to maybe turn your stress level down a little bit like oh yeah a bath would be nice but then when that doesn't work and you're taking a bath every night and you're spending 50 bucks on bath supplies and and you're still empty on the inside and you've not dealt with that like yeah maybe a bath could be self-comfort to then give you the mental space to think about why you're so stressed and how to deal with that right (laughs) right so there's a difference between wanting time alone and taking a bath yes um or i'm hiding in the bathroom and hiding in the tub Mm -hmm. because i can't say i am afraid of what's going to come out of my mouth if i interact with people one more time yeah one for one more second (laughs) um and and i i guess i'm having trouble getting my point across too about yes if you're about to If I'm about to burn it down with my words, I do need to remove myself from the situation. And there is, there is value and that is a productive use of the time. Yes. Yes. But that's not self-care. No. Agreed. Yeah. It, that is a necessary, uh, part of your practice to be able to pause Right. And look underneath what's going on and make a plan to deal with that. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yes. I think that pause is more self-care than any bath or face mask is ever going to be. Right. That is caring for other people as well (laughs) because I'm not, you know, making them hate me or want to murder me. And I'm caring for myself in the way that I'm not going to have to make amends to someone if I take that moment to pause. Yeah. I'm going to actually work on why I'm about to blow my top or at least give myself the opportunity to see why. Yes. Yeah. And I I think what you're saying is like the pause is the self-care. Yes. And the face mask while I am pausing is the... Comfort. Yes. Yes. That's a wonderful way to like help uh, dull the sharp point that is a self-realization that you have not been your best self and you have things you can work on. Mm -hmm. And no, I totally agree. Like I'll be... (laughs) <laughs> like brushing my teeth is not self-care or self-comfort. However, it is a great buzzing distraction while I'm staring at myself in the mirror being like, how can I show up and be the most badass version of me today? Yeah. You know, and putting putting on lotion after I get out of the tub is necessary in the winter. However, it gives my hands something to do while my mind is thinking, what is my wind down routine going to look like? After Mm -hmm. this, what book am I going to read when I get in the bed? What's my 10 step questions and kind of going through that and thinking Mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. I think self-comfort is a great way to make 
those hard truths you need to swallow or that hard inner work a little bit easier to come into. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I do like the fact that the idea of self-care is out there. Yes. Because the proliferation of the concept in, we'll call it media in general, whatever, however you consume that, shows me that there is the audience for it. There's an appetite for it. Yeah. And maybe it gives us all words to talk about it. But I want to talk specifically to the woman who says, I am doing all the things and I still feel hollow. Yeah. Um, you know, self-comfort. I got to the gym and I got this and I did that. I went to and the I spa. I got a massage. Yeah. Yeah. And I still feel like a shell. Mm-hmm. And some of those self-comfort activities, I'm going to shift gears here for a second. So some of the self-comfort activities, oh, well, let me back up and say this. Women out there, especially in a family, I see you when you sit down and your family is like, oh, you're not busy. Mm. So having an activity to do can maybe hide yourself a little bit from your family, (laughs) which is why I love the whole, like, let's invest in a home manicure kit and, you know, those Mm -hmm. self-comfort things. Yes. To do while you just need a second to yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what I want to, to tie it back to uh, the other idea is the suggestions that are coming from media are not self-comfort. Yeah. So how do you differentiate between the two for yourself? Like, do you get down the line? And you're like, oh, I just need something because I, I'm noticing I'm restless, irritable, and discontent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've done these things and it's not helping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I puzzles, (laughs) Mm -hmm. puzzles for sure. Um, Cause it's very like doing puzzles is not childish, but it's a very like childlike play Mm -hmm. activity for me. And it shuts my brain down and it gives me some silence in there. Mm. You know, it look for the blue piece with the green corner and the whatever. Something tangible to focus on if my feelings are all over the place and I need to get grounded mm-hmm. again in like the physical realm of the world. And then once I'm done, it gives me the capacity to have taken that time to like pacify So that I can come into whatever I'm doing with a clear mind, (laughs) like a zonked mind, basically. And it it does give myself like a break, like a nap while I'm awake type of thing is what it does for me. Um, And I look look at food kind of like this, too. Like that's definitely a self-comfort thing for me and has been for a long time. And if I'm doing all the things and I still just really want mac and cheese or a piece of cheesecake or whatever... I'll make the damn thing and mm-hmm. eat it, you know? Right. Like right. I and I might make the better choice to cook it myself instead of buy it in a box. And cause then that lines up better with my morals and values. I don't shame myself after I eat stuff like that because I know mm-hmm. that I'm putting good nutrients into my body, whether or not it's stereotypically or socially healthy. It does food is food. And if I'm putting less preservatives in my body, then I give myself that break of knowing I am taking in nutritious home-cooked food Mm. and it's fine. (laughs) It's going to all come out in the wash. And again, if I'm taking the steps behind the scenes and doing the underground work Mm -hmm. in me and I still have that craving for whatever, then I do it. Mm-hmm. So I guess more so it's, okay, what what have I done for me lately? I feel like that's a song. What what have you done for me oh, yeah. lately is a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Janet Jackson. Is it? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice, nice. I, it's that vapid, hollow feeling. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's the touchstone for me. Like, when I do this, is it helping, you know? Yeah. Like, is this just putting a Band-Aid over it and then the next day I feel like I need to go buy another face mask? Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, this is not self-comfort or self-care because it's obviously not doing its job. (laughs) I'm not comforted and I'm not cared for. 
Yeah. Um, and most of the time, I do bring someone else into that equation because um, mm-hmm. I think self-care is great, but sometimes I need someone else to show me how to care for myself. Yeah. Based on my childhood, I, I need someone to tell me what mm-hmm. to do sometimes. So whether that's a sponsor or Luke mm-hmm. or a friend, like, yeah, sometimes I need them either to give me their ideas of what they did or I tell them the situation and I let them tell me what right. they hear. Right. Because it's we have a crazy filter, you mm-hmm. know, and our filter is our own and another person's going to have a different perspective. Yeah. And they might be able to to tell you like, hey, enough with the face mask. You need to go see someone. Right. <laughs> or like right. you need to grieve whatever this was over here first. Or, hey, maybe you need a new job. <laughs> like mm-hmm. this sounds cuckoo. Yeah. Having an outside perspective to allow you to then have self-care or self-comfort. Mm-hmm. I, I think might get left by the wayside because we think we're getting it because someone's recommending it to us on media. Yes. And we think, oh, well, they know what they're talking about, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So we should do what they did. And yeah. sometimes that's great. Sometimes that's fine. But you don't know that person and they don't know you mm-hmm. most of the time. Um, and reaching out to someone that's in your circle, it also allows you to make like an authentic connection with another human being. Right. Which I think is self-care. Like, yes, being alone, 100% valuable, and I do that all the time. But sometimes that's not what I need. Sometimes that is self-comfort, and what I really need is to be around my people. Yes. And that's what self-care would be, however irky uh, yeah. or resistant I am to it. Yeah. yeah. And it, it what I hear in what you're saying is trends. Yeah. So, yes, being with myself, not by myself, being with myself mm-hmm. is healthy. Yeah. But if the trend is that's what I'm doing – over and over again, over time, that's called isolation. Yes. And that's not healthy. Yep. If I am, um, the the great example that really resonates with me, because I see this, I see myself falling into this is when I am mad, sad, glad, I can't identify my feelings. I just know I'm mad, sad or glad. (laughs) I crave ice cream. Mm. And so if that happens over a consecutive number of days and there's not like a magic number yeah yeah if it is a trend that I become uncomfortable with yes that is when it becomes unhealthy yeah um and I remember this one time I was talking to my friends about you know I just feel like I have so much clutter all over my apartment I you know I've got book stacks and clothes and piles and I don't have a system and I saw this great book on the Today Show this morning did it and my friend's like you don't need a book. Uh-huh. Don't buy the book. Clean your shit up. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's a really good point. Like, <laughs> you know, the the book you need to buy to help you spend less? Yes. Oh my God. Is that is mm. that what we're doing? Yep. So I guess what I am encouraging people to look is the the trends over time and how is that working for you? Yes. Ask yourself that question. Yeah. How's this working for me? Before I make the same decision again and obviously get the same results again, right? how is this working for me? Is it fine? Awesome. Great. Continue. Is it not? Okay. I need to look at this. Yeah. And if it's not working for you, it is not a personal shortcoming because the advertising and marketers that are peddling whatever the, the book product person, whatever it is, yeah. they're really good at what they do. That's why they earn millions yeah. of dollars. And the intention behind it is probably great. Yes. And I see that all the time where where the bait, like I can tell that they started, not that they're coming from, but they started way over here with a great thought process and a great idea. Mm-hmm. And then they monetized it, which is fine. Mm-hmm. But then they realized they had to do more to get it to sell more or to make it more widely digestible or whatever. And then that gets lost. And that sucks. Yeah. That sucks. Um, And identifying that is really hard because, again, it looks like it's you still see the candy coating of what it started as. Yes. But on the inside, it's not that anymore. Right. And a great example of that is the idea of, um, so what I, what I 
I'm going to say preach about, but I don't preach necessarily. What I encourage folks to look at is if, do you, are you living a life that you don't need to escape? Yeah. And if you feel like you need to numb out and escape your life, why is that? Yes. And one of the biggest things I hear is loneliness. Yeah. I just feel alone. So when we are shown pictures of a group of women at a bar with their white wine, um, well, that's what I want. Well, you don't want the wine. You want the feeling that that brings. Yes. So yeah. what else could bring about that feeling? Yeah. Um, is it joining like-minded individuals to paint something mm -hmm. or to join a hiking club, you yeah. know, whatever it might be. And you're not going to knock it out of the park on the first time. But, and then I found this when I stopped running, like I thought I missed running, but what I missed was meeting people to go do something we were all excited about together. Yeah. And now I found other ways to do that. Um, and so when I see other people running, like I'll be driving somewhere and I'll see that, you know, the running groups are, there's 20 people. Mm -hmm. And where I used to feel wistful and, oh, I can't do that. Now I can be happy that oh, they all, how excited were they to get up and go do that on, you know, a Saturday morning or whatever. Yeah. Um, what is the feeling that you're trying to put, put into your life because you don't want to numb out and do this you want that instead yeah and even further than that I think that when people buy a really popular product that's getting shown to them or they see their friend bought or their friend sent it mm -hmm. to them on Instagram or whatever mm -hmm. or a brand name so and so that everybody has to have it's the it thing of the season I think mm -hmm. the the feeling behind that is they want to feel a part of yes and I agree. It, it is a, it is hard to tell. I mean, again, you have to take that moment and pause and really yeah. look at what's underneath that. Like, do you really want that label? Like, is that truly something that lines up with your morals and values and you love that company and they give money to charities or whatever? Or are you doing it because you want to feel part of a group and you don't? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to feel like you've got a certain status or you've achieved something? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, shocker, <laughs> it's deeper than that. And yep. it, it takes a lot of work to figure that out. And I see a lot of people not realizing that and just living their life like that doesn't exist <laughs> or that motivator isn't there. Mm -hmm. um, and it can get really tricky. And I've been there. I've been there. And... It is a vapid void of existence. Like I felt empty and hollow and I filled it with all of the stuff that I thought was going to make me feel good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what really would have made me feel good is to go to therapy and, right. you know, deal with my shit um, and not feel like I have to run from my life or from other people anymore. Mm -hmm. But that would have taken work and effort on my part. And it is the easier thing to do. Instead of working on why am I an asshole, if I just go take a bath, right? <laughs> I don't have to think about that, right. you know, or if I buy the thing, I can get that, uh, that hit, mm -hmm. you know, and feel better about myself for a second. Yeah. Um, when there's a much more filling and lasting way to do that, but it just takes a shit ton of effort. And I get that some people don't want to do that or they don't have the the capacity to or they don't understand that they can. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's kind of why we do this podcast, honestly. Just yeah. And I, we've gotten some feedback from people, which thank you so much for your messages. Because sometimes I don't know if we're talking to anyone, you know, like I see that people have watched and listened, but um, sometimes it's like, is anyone, are you getting what we're putting down? <laughs> like, are you understanding? <laughs> yeah. And to hear that people have had that realization of like, oh, that's why all the things I'm trying to fill this empty hole inside my chest with aren't working. Mm -hmm. um, or just to know that there's a hole that they're filling with other stuff, mm -hmm. um, that awareness is a really big deal. Yeah. And yeah. we do it without thinking. I mean, it's easy. Yep. And one other path I want to take us down is that it does work 
for a short amount of time. So if I go back to my, um, I'm feeling lonely and I want, I want what they have. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing the the group of women, um, and maybe not even on an ad, but, um, actually in the bar yeah and they look like they're having a wonderful time and they might be and for a time I could have a glass of wine and enjoy in kibitz and and I felt more comfortable Uh once I had that glass of wine because I could share more and I was funnier and you know all these things Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and it worked until it didn't. Yeah. yeah. Because then I'm like, well, now do people only like me when I'm funny? And I have to like second guess all of that. Mm-hmm. And I don't have the money to go spend at the bar. Or I feel like um, I'm embarrassed to go back because I've left my credit card there. Mm-hmm. So now you have all of these other things that happen out of that. It worked until it didn't. That's what yes. I mean by until it didn't. Yes. And then when I leave there and I think, okay, well, I said that and that didn't really land because I never would have said that if I hadn't had the alcohol. Mm-hmm. I want to be part of this group, but now I have offended people in that group. Um, yep. You know, it works until it doesn't. And it's not just alcohol that does that. It's everything. Because then I was like, well, you know what? I just have this habit of sitting down and watching TV and eating ice cream. Mm -hmm. But I'm not (laughs) even mad, sad, glad. Yeah. Yeah. Knee jerk. Yeah. Yeah. It is the trend over time Mm -hmm. that I want to return to that you can ask yourself, is this working? Yeah. And if it's not, it's okay to change your mind. Yes. Oh, yes. I I think that people need to feel empowered to, like, change as humans. Mm-hmm. I don't know why there's this – I don't know if it's a stigma or what. Um, like, if you believed one thing and now you've learned more and grown or whatever and now you believe something different, people yeah. feel scared to vocalize that or, like, be authentic in that because they're – I don't know if they're afraid they're going to get called fake or – a, flip a flip-flopper. Flopper. Yeah. Ugh. Like, who gives a shit? Like, Thank I... Thank God I believe differently than I did in my 20s. Holy crap. Yeah. Young Sue. I mean, Young Ugh. Sue. I'm looking in the camera like she's listening. I mean. <laughs> she is. <laughs> she's right here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's like, oh, pe- like people saying, oh, you've changed. I know. Thank, Thank God. fucking God. <laughs> Yikes. And if you liked yeah. the old me goodbye I guess I don't know like (laughs) go enjoy your memories of her because I'm one I'm not here to show up as anyone other than who I am right now Mm -hmm. and that could change from day to day my like core values and beliefs do not change from day to day they change over long periods of time yes um but yeah I you have the permission and the capability to be a different person Whenever you choose, like you, you can stop. If you're upset that you're the person that drinks every night to chill out from work, you have, you have the, the cape, like you have it in you Mm -hmm. to not be that person anymore. There are other ways to live. And just because you've done something in the past does not mean you have to continue to do it. Just because you have a shitty relationship with someone doesn't mean that you can't change that. Just because you have a certain way of relating to someone doesn't mean that you can't take the steps to be different and show up, you show up as different. Right. And Or that relationship just doesn't work anymore. True that. Yeah. If you have a shitty relationship, you can either change the shitty or let go of the relationship. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I love your example, like the seeing the women in the bar and, and wanting to feel a part of and drinking. At a certain point, I was drinking by myself. Right. So that did not make me feel a part of. (laughs) And then I'd be too drunk to go out. So and then I would do it anyway and make an ass of myself. So it is it is that touchstone of like there is a a tipping point. And if you are quiet for long enough with yourself, you will be able to tell. Mm -hmm. It is not hard to tell if you stop and listen. Right. Um. I mean, you might need to make a pros and cons list. I mean, sometimes you need that black and white 
to be able to look at it. But I would caution you like, yeah, go ahead and make the pros and cons list, but look at how you feel as a trend, like maybe get a mood tracker or something yeah. and write down what you do each day and figure out where the holes are. Yeah. <laughs> And don't you think, though, that if you have the nudge from the universe to make a pro-con chart, you know that a change needs to happen. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, if you're feeling something, listen to it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean you always need to take action on it. But, I mean, your feelings are there for a reason. Whether you need to investigate it and ignore it yeah. or investigate it and change your life. There and it's all there's gray in between there. Not really for me most of the time, but th there is always going to be a reason that that is bubbling up. Mm -hmm. There, I mean, it's your body telling you like this package is smarter than we give it credit for. Yeah, <laughs> and if we allow those electrical signals that create our anxiety and mad, sad, glad, like those base level functions. If we listen to that, um, you're going to learn a lot mm -hmm. and you can, you'll be able to suss out like, is this just because I'm about to start my cycle or <laughs> is this yeah. because I need to like go back to therapy and do some inner work Yeah. or is it just Tuesday? You know, right, like right. it could be. I don't like Tuesdays. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> um, and then I, I the last thing I want to say, um, and I know I keep saying that, but I do want to be very clear that I strongly believe that there's room for both. Yes. Do you, yes. you agree? A hundred percent. You just have to like look at the intention behind it. Yes. yes. Call it what it is. Yep. So in, in this, this example, um, when I was going through a very intense exercise over several, several months of therapy, um, so we... We actually, my therapist had my husband come in because she was like, I need you to understand what we're doing here mm. so that when Susan comes home and needs to be alone, like yeah. there's some context around this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the therapy was the self-care. Yeah. But then like I would put on my fluffiest clothes. Yes. I would wear my uh, noise canceling headphones for a little bit. Like I really needed some intense mm -hmm uh stimulus deprivation yeah and that is self-care in that particular scenario like I needed both yes in order to to make it through that sounds super dramatic but no I don't there think there needs it does to at be all. both at different times in our life they yeah. don't always have to go hand in hand but really being aware of what yes. you're doing what is underneath because like face masks are great like if you want to pop one on and hop in the tub and think about your life, fuck yeah. Yeah. That That is some self-care for me. That's what I do in the tub. Mm -hmm. I sit there and I think about all of the things. Mm -hmm. I, I like mental dump and like obsess over whatever I'm obsessing about. And then I turn it off and then I open it back up and I see what's there. Yeah. And kind of suss that out. Like there, there is, there is a necessity for both. Both exist. But don't fall for the junk version. Get the real good made from scratch version. Yeah. Like it's the balance of both. Yes. Like you you can have the face mask in the bath, but also realize you need to go to therapy. Like it's all there for you. Yeah. Good. <laughs> um, all right. What is bringing you joy this week? Well, I, I kind of touched on it. <laughs> and I think I've mentioned, I'm sure I've mentioned this is my moment of joy multiple times. I am obsessed with puzzles and there is a very particular, I'm very particular about my puzzles. There is a folk artist called Charles Wysocki. Pretty sure I'm saying his name correctly. We might could link in the show notes. Yes. Okay. Oh, he's got puzzles all over Amazon. Um, his art is so soothing. First off, it's folk art. So it's like very um, not realistic. Like the proportions are realistic, but it's mm -hmm. like illustration type, not super photorealism. And it's of like old colonial horse and buggy eras hmm. and like old buildings and or like landscape scenes. And it is just very... 
I don't know if nostalgic's the right word. I think someone related to me might have had one of his picture like a print of his framed Mm -hmm. and i just always remember that so like folk art in general is like oh yeah (laughs) um but it is it that is my self-comfort right now because i am definitely got some stuff that i am working on and need to work on and it has helped me Mm -hmm. (laughs) immensely to like chill the fuck out and not go off the deep end um because I know why I feel the way I do, and I am doing the action steps to work on it. Mm-hmm. But those feelings are just going to be chilling here for a while. Yeah. And I got to learn to deal with them in a healthy way, and puzzling is that way. Yeah. And I, I think if we're going to continue with the theme of this and go to the core of that, I think my moment of joy is being able to discern the fact that just because I'm having these feelings isn't bad. Mm. They're here. I'm doing the footwork to work on what's underneath them. Yeah. And they're just going to chill there. And they're valid, but they need to stay over there. Right. And I I can have and develop healthy coping mechanisms mm-hmm. to deal with them in the interim. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. What about you? Um. So mine, uh, it's sort of a book that I read. Um. The book was very good and I loved it. It was part of the Thursday Murder Club series. It was the third book in, of the three that are out. So I'm, I'm up to speed. <laughs> but what is really bringing me joy about that, not the individual book itself, but is that this series is just knocking it out of, par- out of the park as a series yeah. and not in like this formulaic way. It's not like Jack Reacher comes to town, bad stuff happens. Ooh, they yeah, think yeah. it's Jack Reacher. Jack Reacher solves it. <laughs> he kicks somebody's ass and he talks about guns. Uh-huh. And I do love some Jack Reacher. Yeah. But this Thursday Murder Club um, series is just not formulaic. The, the, uh, Oh uh, gosh, what I call it? The just the kibitzing back and forth between the dialogue. Yeah, the dialogue is delightful. The plots are always just enough different, but then there's consistencies through it. Yeah. So, and I guess part of comfort for me is getting what I expect at, at a certain point. Yeah, I know we need <laughs> to try new things. Uh, but I'm not. But not all the time. Right. That's not healthy either. Right. Right. (laughs) So when I have a lot of change in other parts of my area, I'm delighted by being able to count on my hobbies coming through for me so yeah same we we yes. same moment of joy is here absolutely so richard osman you're knocking it out of the park thank you yes and <laughs> i to like piggyback off of that it's okay to re-watch the office for the 15th time because you feel squirrely yes. it's okay i've been watching grantchester for like two months really i don't even know what that is oh my gosh it's on um pbs masterpiece Oh, I remember you talking oh about God. that. It's, yeah. It is lovely and vapid and formulaic. <laughs> I don't know how there's anyone left alive in this town because every single episode, it's a murder. And then this priest and this detective solve it together. Okay. And then they put someone in jail. So I don't know how the whole town isn't either dead or in jail. My mom yeah. brought that up and she had a very good point. Yeah, and but, now you can't unsee it. Right. And I mean, you got to suspend disbelief a little bit. It's a priest and a detective working together to solve murders. That's not, that, that's not how that works. <laughs> but it is lovely. Yeah. And cozy. And it's in the 50s. And mm-hmm. they talk about all of like the ways in which people have grown socially since then in the ways that they didn't at that point in time. Mm-hmm. And they talk about the war and PTSD. And they talk about racism. And they talk about people being bigots. Right. And it is deep but also lovely mm-hmm. <laughs> excellent yeah deep but also lovely that's us that's us i hope <laughs> and you dear listener if you would like to come be deep and lovely with us i am at sustainable underscore sue on instagram and you can find me online at sustainable sue.com love that and i am at janae pv and you can watch us if you're not already conscious contact podcast on youtube um come drop us a line let us know when you realize that it wasn't working anymore Mm. (laughs) i think that that's a great thing to share with people because offering up a bottom for someone can help you feel heard and say okay i feel how they feel it can be enough right now yeah and make a change or not realize that you don't need to and that this is great and mac and cheese and ice cream is fine yep so acknowledging what is exactly great discussion yes see you next time